back on the 12th of July 2021, Microsoft announced some new privacy capabilities for Microsoft 365. This is a new solution that can be found within the compliance portal called Privacy Management. This is in preview today, so it's not generally available, and it should be rolling out across different tenants. So have a look whether you've got this today. The idea being is this is more focused on finding and visualizing personal data. So data that you might be storing within the platform, understanding where that lives across the services that you use and the conditions in which it's managed long term. Lots of organizations that I speak to today still keep data for a lot longer than they should. They don't have the appropriate retention policy set up or even deletion policies in order to erase that data when they're requested to. This new privacy tool is carved up into three different sections. So down here on the bottom left, we can see data profile, policies, and subject right requests. The idea between these different tools allow us to find and visualize personal data, or even identify policy management for evaluating key data risks, scenarios using the built-in tools for alerts and remediating issues for things like oversharing or exposure information or unnecessarily storing personal information. And for a while, we had a data subject request tool that was designed to give out to people within the business, which is more of a guided search, much like core e-discovery, but this is quite a limited tool. Now we can see this new subject right request allows you to manage personal data for those custodians that you store data about them. So you can use the privacy management tool to collect that data, review the findings, and then export that data. And rather than solely relying on human beings, we also have automation built in. So we can automate things like key tasks to easily manage your data and handling workflows. So now you've had your two minute overview, let's explore this interface together. We start off with the overview page. This is telling me high level things like 226 new items are found with personal information. We can see there's some policy matches that I might need to go and investigate in a second. And also there's one active subject rights request. If I scroll down, I can see key insights. So content items that contain the most personal information. So we can see out of that, there's 63 data types I'm interested in and also out of five owners. We can click on the view summary here to get an informational blade. So it gives me a preview of the data types that's found and also the content owners. If I want to drill deeper into this, I can click on the explore button. This is like a cut down version of advanced e discovery. So if I've got appropriate rights, then I can preview this content as well over on the right hand side. So this is this PDF document. If I click on the details, I get more metadata about where that data is stored and the personal information types that the system has identified in the content. Equally, if I click on an Excel spreadsheet, yes, I get the same metadata there, but also using the native online viewers, I'm able to preview this Excel document within here as well. So heading back to the overview page, we can see the active policies and we'll go into that in a little moment. We can also see personable, identifiable information has been found in our organization. So this is by data type, show me how much certain types I have within my organization, but we can also do it by location. So this is looking at the core repositories of Office 365 where your data is stored, which is Exchange and SharePoint. We can also see any data transfers that have been detected in our organization, and we'll show that within the policies. Overexpose personal data, and again, we can drill into that in a little bit. And then some high level views about the data subject requests or subject rights request that we have active within the portal. So let's jump into the data profile page. This allows us to visualize that data in multiple different ways. So here we can see the core repositories or where that data is being stored and then how much of that content we're storing across our organization. And when we click on explore, again, we can view those locations. And much like the data classification tab at the very top of this compliance portal, now it's given me a list of all of the sensitive information types that I can drill down in. So here under defense terms, I can see there's 400, 140 files even in exchange, and I can drill down into that service that will show me individual mailboxes, and I can drill down into those mailboxes and then I get a list of all of those 
uh, items that contain that type of sensitive information. Heading back to this initial card, you can also see at the bottom right here, another card that says personal data type instances by region. So if you're a multi-geo customer, this is where we can look across all of the different child tenants that you have active within your multi-geo environment and then be able to drill into those as well. Next up, let's go into the privacy policies. This allows us to identify activities for data exposure, for transfer, or even data minimalization. So that's where you're storing or collecting large amounts of personal data on customers or even employees and it's excessive need of keeping unused content. So basically reducing the privacy uh, limits, the risk associated with that information. The data transfer policy is to identify transferring of data across different departments or even regional borders. So if you need to identify that data exposure, then that would be the policy type that we might be looking at here. And data overexposure, similar to data loss prevention, you need to be able to detect or handle situations where data is stored inefficiently. So for example, you might be using an internal site that has uh, access permissions to everyone. So we're not actually keeping that personal data safe and you might be vulnerable to a certain breach then. So within the interface here, we can see a number of policies are already turned on. This very last one, we can see there's three policy matches. So let's go in and investigate that. So when we go into that policy, we can see this overview page. So we can see the status on, we can see the matches by location, we can see the content types, and we can also see the users that have matched uh, with this data overexposure policy. If we click on the matched items, we can also get a, the content explorer so we can preview those items. This time, not only can we see the content in its native form, but also we can see the file activities. So this is coming from the 365 audit log. So if somebody accessed a file or created a sharing link or shared a file with somebody internally, we will be able to see the timeline of that and also the remediation history. This is in preview at the moment. So I've noticed on the Microsoft Docs uh, website that there should be a remediation button coming. So look out for that. So that's going to a policy that's already created. Let's go in and show you what it looks like to create a policy. Uh, so I'm going to click on create a policy at the very top here. And then we have four different templates that I can choose from in this preview. So we could do a custom one if we wanted to, or if we wanted to identify data transfers, then we can click on the create. Um, we get an explanation about what this policy is designed to do. And then we can also view the settings of this. So if we do that, it's looking for data uh, types based on common privacy regulations, such as GDPR or uh, PII information. It's covering all users and all services, which is Exchange, OneDrive, SharePoint, Teams. And it's also saying when the policy match is due to occur. So for example, in here, we can see data, uh, which is transferred from North America to any regions within the world. So notice I can edit settings or I can customize these built-in templates as I see fit. So we can give it a name, for example. Uh, we can click on next here. What are the data? What is the data that I want to monitor? So is it classification groups or individual sensitive information types? What are the users and groups or specific uh, areas that I want to discover or, or to trigger this policy? What are the data locations that I'm interested in? data transfers from across boundaries or regions or across departments within your organization. So if we think about financial industries where they have traders and people within the bank that they shouldn't communicate with, this would be perfect for identifying that type of information being shared across groups. And then we can define the outcomes when a policy is matched. So here we can say when the content is matched, then give the users policy tips and recommendations. We can also send an email notification about when the policy occurs and then a frequency in which to send that notification. Also notice we can link to some privacy training as well to notify the end user that a policy has been triggered or a privacy policy has been triggered and also to help them do some self-help self, self -help training as well. Next screen is around alerts and thresholds. So we can choose when those alerts get defined. And then a mode, so it's suggesting we should run this in a test mode, which is good practice, especially if you've done uh, DLP within 365 as well, where we get three different modes. So we can monitor, monitor with uh, policy tips turned on, and we can also enforce the policy as well. So this is working a much similar way to that. And I'm click next, and then we can 
review all of my settings and I can submit that policy then. And lastly, data rights requests. It's gonna take me a while to erase uh, DSRs from my brain, but uh, this allows me to identify data subject requests. And I can see one here, uh, Megan Bowen, they can see the status of this is active, it's retrieval of data, and we've also got deadlines and days remaining. So this is quite interesting, especially if you need to um, provide information in a certain period of time. So let's go in and create a request. This is pretty simple, it's a guided wizard. It's gonna say, hey, enter the name of the data subject. So let's pick me. Uh, we can say residency is going to be UK and we can also define attributes in here, which is really interesting. So this allows me to uh, better identify those custodians or, or those data subjects uh, requests uh, for that individual. So I'm just going to type in a dummy number in there. Uh, you don't have to do that, by the way, that's optional. And then we're going to say, how is this person related to your organization? So their customer, a current employee, former employee, so we can better identify who that data subject is, and then what type of request is this? So we've got three different types here. We can say it's an access request, so we need to uh, identify a summary of information we're keeping uh, for that person. Or is it an export, so the person said, hey, give me all the data that you have on me, please. Or is it to tag it, so we can follow up and identify different actions, like the person has decided they wanted all of their information deleted, so we want to tag those items. And then we can also say here, is the request related to a data privacy regulation? And yes or no, yes allows me to select different regulations. So if you've not seen my video on compliance manager and the assessments, you'll understand where these are coming from. Uh, we can also say no, and we can also stipulate a deadline that this information uh, needs to be presented back to that data subject. So if we click next, we can give it a name uh, and description, and then we can also review the details and hit create a request. So let's go ahead and do that. So success, it says that our request has been recreated and we can get go and now we can see our new subject request uh, in here. Let's go in. And interestingly, this is giving me a progress about the different stages I need to go and close this request. So I need to get a data estimate. So that's doing a data collection, retrieving that data, reviewing the data and exporting the report and the actual content. Uh, to that person, depending on the type of request that is coming in. So as this is a new request, uh, if I click on data collected, I can see a data collection is in progress. I need to check back soon. I would guess in the background, this is doing a, a search. So a data collection across those live repositories, uh, much like advanced data discovery is doing that collection, running an index of that content. And then I'm able to preview that content within this one tool. So there's some features in here that you might have seen within the Insider Risk Management tool as well. So there's a place where we can type in free text notes. We can also have external uh, collaborators as part of this, uh, this DSR or subject uh, request. And also we can automatically create and chat uh, with those collaborators within Microsoft Teams. You also notice that we have some features in here to create uh, a flow in Power Automate. So rather than going through this manually, we can use Power Automate to do something very easy or very something uh, complex or a workflow that we need to work towards in order to do uh, these subject right requests. So that's all I've got time for today. This privacy management tool is in preview at the moment. So that's all I can show you that's available. I'm really super excited about how this tool is going to work going forward. If you see something in here that you think would be super cool to see, down in the bottom right, you should have this give feedback page and Microsoft reads this. So if there's something you don't see or something aren't working quite right, then provide your feedback straight away. Just wanna say thank you very much for your time today and I'll see you in the next one.